Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Maston here at Maston Labs, and today I have a special announcement. We have released mobile profiles for Lightroom Mobile. They are amazing, and they are very, well, in many ways, they're very much the same as the desktop product. They will give you the same look, but they're made differently, and they're for a different purpose, which I will get into. So. The desktop presets we make are kind of an industry leading standard for a lot of wedding photographers, portrait photographers, newborn photographers, commercial photographers, magazine photographers, nature photographers, sports photographers, all the photographers. Um, but we never had a on the go solution. And that is where mobile profiles come in. We have translated all of our desktop uh, presets into a mobile version with a even more simplified workflow and they are optimized for mobile JPEGs, meaning they are not for a raw workflow, not for like, hey, you know, I'm shooting this 400 image set for a wedding or a magazine or whatever, and then editing them in Lightroom very carefully and, you know, doing more kind of intricate uh, editing and tweaks and all that stuff. Instead, this is for getting your personal photos, your on-the-go photos, your behind-the-scenes photos to match up with your professional work that you're delivering to clients. And also just to have really cool stuff for your day-to-day -day work, like your own personal life, which is also really important. And you want to keep that beautiful film look that we have been trying to help you achieve for years. You can keep that throughout everything you do and make your Instagram feed completely consistent, etc. So, Without further ado, I'm going to get into the system, show you how it works. We're going to bring up the phone on the screen. You'll see it firsthand. If you have any questions while I'm doing this, please put them in the comments and Casey will flag me down and I will answer those questions for you. So without, uh, without any more blah, 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 let's get started. Okay, so this works within Lightroom Mobile. That's the first thing that's really important to realize. And I'm in here in Lightroom Mobile. Um, I've got a mix of images from our website that we have taken the raw and made into uh, just straight up JPEGs, no adjustments whatsoever, so that you can see how they compare to the raw, the raw version edit with the desktop presets. And then I've got some images that are from my own personal library uh, from shoots that we've done with iPhones, etc., that I can edit down here as well. So, um, yeah, I. I guess I'll just show you exactly how they work. That's the most important thing. So this is from a styled shoot that was part of a workshop called Photo Native, a really fun, amazing workshop down in Utah that I spoke at a few years ago. And I shot some stuff with my iPhone. And uh, I thought this would be a good one to start with because a lot of people are into wedding photography in this community. Um, and it looks like someone tagged me in a post on Instagram. Great, okay. So uh, I don't think I have my, no my notification. Oh, they are turned off. All right. Cool, Apple. Um, so let's start with this. So these are profiles. You're not going to go to the preset section way over here. You're not going to do that. You're going to go just straight right in front of you to profiles and then select the look that you want. I've gone into uh, Lightroom, like the, the cloud version not the classic version. And after installing the mobile profiles, they will sync to your phone. They'll be in Lightroom Mobile. And now I can access them here. So I'm gonna to go to just Fuji Color Original. This is like one of our most famous packs. And all you need to do is so simple. It's, it's almost less than our normal workflow. You just select a profile and you can adjust the intensity for just a very basic edit and that that's it. I mean, here's before and there's after with Fuji 400H. Um, you can, yeah, just hit OK. And then the only things that you, you really need to do at all, if anything, is just go to the light section and adjust exposure if you need to. Um, the profiles have all of the wonderful uh, film models that we've built. So they react like film would with exposure increases or decreases. And that's about as simple as it can get. This is a, this is a photo actually shot on an iPhone 6S. It's not even very modern. And I mean, that looks pretty damn good. I, I think it's pretty exciting. I mean, like, geez, like 
you you don't ever have to suffer bad bad edits no matter where you are or what you shoot with you can do raw with a desktop you can do jpeg with your phone and this is not even you know super modern uh iphone photos here that i'm showing you right now um yeah you i mean really it's cool you're just gonna live within just this very first part of this whole panel you've got profiles you can switch them um you've got you know uh bleh, light so you can get to exposure why on earth uh, adobe didn't make a compact panel with light and white balance in it is beyond me but uh you know they're right next to each other so if you need to like adjust white balance you can so if i want to make this just a tad warmer you can but i mean that is so simple and yeah it's nice uh one other thing that's really cool about profiles is you can actually see down below you can see what they're going to look like before you even click on them i love that so say i wanted like you know ektar it's quite a more extreme look going especially going from fuji 400h i can look down below in the profiles and see what it would look like with ektar with gold 200 or with triax just like that um man with ektar i think i would actually cool it down a little just a tiny bit and yeah, right about there look at that that's so cool so nice love it okay let's move on um let's see let's do something oh i don't know stop me if you see something you like and i will stop and edit it for you so this is also from the really fantastic uh photo shoot down in photo native in utah uh i think i remember the background on this one had uh, a little bit of blue in it. it was kind of a blue gray so i think maybe gold 200 would look cool Oh, look at that. So good. Bam. Before, after. This is a JPEG. This is an iPhone 6S. Just like, you know, pop my phone up in the middle of a style shoot. Probably annoyed the other 15 photographers around me and took this photo real quick. And there you go. That's one click. I mean, if you want it to be more gold 200 e if that's even a term you could just hit the intensity slider and bring it you know more up more up it's not even a word you bring it up or you know say say that's too much gold 200 e you can just bring it down a little bit and you've got your photo before and after okay um man what other questions can i help you guys with uh, it's just so exciting. It's like, it's so simple. It's so simple. Um, let's see. I love this photo too. So Catherine Stevens took this of her friend. Uh, I love it. I think it was maybe for an album. Um, this is also an older iPhone photo. And, oh, let's see. Let's do, what would be cool? Let's do something dark and moody. I'm gonna do portrait pushed. We're gonna do portrait 160 push two stops. Um, needs to go down in exposure quite a bit. I mean, if you look at the original photo, it's still pretty light for being dark and moody, but no problem. Let's go down to the exposure panel, bring it down. Go to color, it's a little bit too cool. And a little green. And boop, and a boop. Yes, I love it. Um, in fact, I'm gonna bring the exposure down even more. Now you'll notice there's something really different about this than our traditional flow. And I'm wondering if you can guess what that is. So here's before and after. That's Portra 160 push two stops. It's the dopest of the dopest. Um, one thing that's missing is we don't have tone profiles. We don't have lens correction. We don't have different grains. We don't have all of those things that you have in the desktop version, the desktop presets that you would have for editing your professional, you know, wedding photos or commercial shoots. And the reason is, is that they are not really appropriate for just photos on the go. We want you to be able to edit quickly and easily and not have to fiddle too much. That's what the desktop or you know possibly iPad editing is for. 
and the the phone is about getting the shot and getting it out there and just making it beautiful quickly in my opinion and it's one of the reasons that we don't really encourage the use of presets in a mobile environment and it's also the reason we don't encourage the use of profiles in a professional raw editing environment in the desktop or on the desktop why well, the reason we stick with presets on the desktop is that we don't want to hide what's under the hood. We want you to be able to see what all the adjustments are to make small refinements uh, over time if needed. And also have access to more of a modular system, which we, you know, you've already know about a thousand times over from all of our other videos. Um, here's portrait 160 push two stops. Yeah. This is so cool. I can like talk and edit at the same time because it's so easy. Um, let's just warm this up a little bit. A little tiny bit lighter. Boom. So good, right? Oh, I, I'm so excited. I'm kind of shaking. Um, <laughs> another reason we don't use profiles for desktop is that it hides a lot of stuff under the hood. It's in a separate part of Lightroom away from the left panel where all of the other parts of our system exists for the desktop user. So where the tone profiles are, where all the cool little tools are, that's all on the left side. Profiles are on the right side and they are perfect for a mobile environment. So now, yeah, and for JPEGs. So now you can just like get in there and edit quickly and get a beautiful image and it keeps the spirit of shooting mobile intact. Mobile is not about fiddle farting around with 80 adjustments. It's about just seeing it and getting it how you want. And I mean, look, just look at that. That's so, can I zoom in? Yes, I can. Look at that. Look at that. Pretty good, right? I'm editing while I'm talking to you with my thumb. Okay. Um, do we have any questions so far? I think I've seen like a thousand questions pop up. Yeah, people are asking about um, shooting the, or using them with Apple Raw. Uh, and then, um, yeah. Okay, great question. So Apple released Pro Raw. Now, I, I, it's funny, we're just talking about this right before the show. So the thing with Apple Pro Raw is that it's not like, it's not like your dad's Raw. Um, like the raw that came out, you know, a couple of years ago, like in, I don't know, as far back as 2015 or 2016, um, Apple pro raw gets you to the starting point of what the JPEG would look like. So you don't see any difference when you're shooting it. The old raw, your granddaddy's raw, when you shot it or your grandmother's raw, when you shot it, it would be all muddy and gross because there was literally no processing over the raw data, none. And so no one adopted it. No one really liked it. Um, it. It really never took off. Pro Raw gives you the best of both worlds. It looks like the the JPEG, eh, the JPEG out output, but you can actually fix white balance and exposure issues to a much greater degree than a JPEG where it's baked in. And so the long story short is it'll work exactly the same. It's still optimized for Pro Raw. The desktop version is still is not going to be quite the right fit because the desktop assumes a completely untouched image that you would see on your desktop and it's going to be gray and muddy and we're all used to that. That is not how ProRAW is going to work on mobile. ProRAW is just like a JPEG on steroids. You can just, you know, fix it much better. Hope that answers your question. Um, Love this photo. Let's see, what am I gonna use on it? Uh, if you have any more questions, please let me know. Um, I'm actually, let's see here. I think this is gonna look good in the portrait push section. There's portrait pushed, portrait 400 push one stop. How intense do we want it? I'm gonna make it less intense. I'm gonna use this really cool intensity slider to just bring it down just a little bit. And there you go, one click, one click, Perfect edit, exactly how I want. It's pretty cool. Okay. Anyway, oof. All right. I gotta get. I gotta come down off the mountain. Um, <laughs> do we have any more questions? Um, uh, Jake Judd is. Uh, she uses, doesn't use Lightroom Classic. Uses Lightroom. Uh, is that your uh, Lightroom CC? 
the, the cloud version. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she wants to know uh, uh, if the, like how this is different from using the desktop to edit with uh, the, the presets. I think you just talked about that. Yeah. So do you mean like why not just use the desktop presets on mobile? Mm -hmm. Okay. So people were using the desktop presets on mobile. Uh, we didn't necessarily encourage it because there are some issues. And it's funny, it's already started to come up in the group. People are starting to see the, the logic behind why we had to translate everything to profiles. So the issue is, if you are using the desktop presets on your JPEGs, even pro raw, they're not gonna look correct because they're made for raw images. And that's a completely different starting point than a JPEG, completely different. Um, there were like little workarounds and hacks you could you can do, and go ahead and do them if you want, but it's a pain in the ass and it'll never look quite right because it's a different starting point. So yeah, you could, you could um, try to fix the highlight and shadow retention and the contrast and the vibrancy and translate a few of the colors and get something similar to the mobile profiles, but it's a hell of a lot of work. And uh, that's why we started over, or not started over, but translated everything on our own internally. And it took some time so that you could get a one-click edit essentially with mobile profiles. So I hope that answers your question, but they're, they're very different. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's do Fuji pushed. So Fuji color pushed. What I like about this is there's a lot of pink. Love it or hate it. I love it. Um, this is the pink pack. Fuji 400H pushed two stops. I think that plus kind of a big exposure bump and a little more um, magenta to kind of get the table right. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm actually going to go back to the profile. I'm going to de-intensify it to about here and go back to exposure and go up just a little bit more. There we go. So before and after. And you got that, that really nice kind of pink uh, shift in the highlights that you can see in the cake and the curtain behind. Right back here. That's so cool. And all the details preserved. It's awesome. It has, it has all of the power of the desktop presets and the film modeling and everything, but it's in a package that works better for mobile, for a, a mobile workflow. Um, let me get to just like a very normal, okay. So these are just some more recent photos. Uh, this is with an iPhone 10 and this is just up in the San Juans and it's kind of an underexposed photo. Um, let's see what would look cool. Anything would look cool. How about Fuji color every day? Now let's, let's do pushed. Push has a lot of fun with blue. There we go. Fuji 160 and S push two stops. Let's make it more 160 and SE by increasing the intensity. Then I'm going to go to uh, light, increase the exposure just, you know, as far as I feel like it to about here and maybe warm it up a little bit. Let me see. I kind of like the blue of the water. I'm going to leave it. I, I think it's exactly, I love it. There we go. That's before and after. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me see. I'm gonna bring down the, yeah, add a little tiny bit of green. Okay, now I'm getting lost. Now I'm just kind of doing fun things. All right, there, that's what I want. But that is so cool. Now, here's the issue, or just to kind of like go back to the difference between presets and profiles. If I wanted to do a similar edit to this, okay, um, let me just undo everything here. Boo, boo, boo. Okay, if I wanted to do something similar to that last edit I did, and I went back into presets, I would have to go find Fuji every day. Or no, I was in Fuji Push. 
Where is it? Ooh, some of these are old, old, old. We have all kinds of test versions in here. Well, that's fun. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Okay, say, say it's in here. Oh, that's not going to be good. Uh, Fuji pushed. Let's just go with that one. Oh my God, there's so many test versions in here. And maybe this is a bad idea. Yeah, we just do it live. <laughs> All right, maybe there aren't so many in here. Okay, here's more of a normal looking uh, pack in here. So the issue here is you have so many different choices and things that you need to kind of, you know, check off just to get to your basic edit that it's not a very efficient system. Also, you have to like select it and always hit yes as you go over and over again to get through your basic edit. And on top of it, this edit is incorrect. It's not starting from a raw file. So the contrast is incorrect. Um, the highlight and shadow retention is not gonna be right. It's not gonna be a very accurate film model. You can see examples of this uh, starting to pop up in the group when people compare uh, their desktop edit versus their mobile profile edit, that they're not quite getting the same beautiful film look um, because they haven't been translated correctly. And we kind of like struggled through this in the com or internally inside of Mass and Labs. We're like, okay, we can just use desktop presets. And it just was a very unpleasant experience. Um, whereas with the profiles, it's just like, a billion times better and easier. Um, let's see here. Let's do Fuji Color every day. C200 done, and then you can just change the intensity. It, it's so much better. Anyway, yes, we are excited that this exists. Um, we've been answering questions as they pop up inside the community. We are excited to get the community uh, to you know understand and start using this and see more mobile photography both in the community and on our Instagram and everywhere else, uh, because we think this opens up a lot of possibilities for everybody. If you want that beautiful film look, that beautiful film color, you can, you can get it pretty quickly now. All right, so I've got this kind of this portrait of this weirdo here. And <laughs> uh, let's see how black and white looks. Fantastic. Black and white. Um, Again, this is just a you know basic iPhone photo. Let's do C200 and Superior 400. Just dial that down or up, whatever you want. And you got your edit before and after. Okay, so some people wanted to see or have asked, how do they compare to the output of the desktop presets? And that is where the beauty of the translation really lies. Like uh, we worked very hard to adjust all of those differences between a raw starting point and a JPEG starting point to give you identical results with the desktop. So there was one person in the community who asked like, I would like to see a side by side. Um, this image is I think in the thumbnail of this video and you can find it on our website pretty easily. This is a JPEG of the unaltered raw file. So here is, uh, for example, a ektar edit of that image. So I applied ektar. I'm going to increase the exposure just a little bit and warm it up just a tiny bit. And I believe it's either ektar or gold that's on the website. Uh, I can show you both but that is pretty amazing. It's really, really good, really good. There's no blockiness, there's no artifacting, there's really nice smooth roll off from shadows to highlights. The film model uh, made it through from the desktop raw version to the mobile profile version for JPEGs and it looks really good and we're super, super proud of it. Um, do we have any questions? Um, I see, I saw one that just popped up that says, I imported my presets in Lightroom, but they aren't showing up. Does anyone know why? That happens a lot. That is because you have to let them sync. It takes a moment for them to sync from Lightroom Mobile 
to or the from the Lightroom cloud version, which is just now called Lightroom, to the Lightroom mobile version on your phone. And you just have to give them a little bit of time and they will sync up. Yes, it could take up, I don't know, it could take up to 10 minutes for it to sort itself out. And that is an Adobe thing, but they will show up and you will be fine. Uh, however, if you are trying to do it through Lightroom Classic, it is not going to be the correct way. And there's lots of information in our help section. Uh, also with your purchase, there's a PDF. All the information you need is there. And if you have any further problems, we are always here to help you at help or support at massandlabs.com and we'll sort it out for you. Uh, here I am in Stockholm with my oldest daughter Maeve and I'm here to speak at Way Up North. Again, an amazing conference if you have a chance to go, one of my favorites. And this is just a quick photo that my girlfriend shot and yeah, I'm just gonna edit it with, all right, I'm already in the Adventure Every Day pack Let's see, I think Ektar looks good. So we're gonna do Ektar, hit okay. We're gonna go to uh, light. I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. I don't often do that. And I'm gonna warm it up just a tiny bit. Um, and there you go, horizontal, looks good. And uh, this definitely needs a little bit of a crop or a rotation. So it looks a little cuckoo. Um, yeah, that looks good. Well, I need to do transform, don't I? Yes. Anywho. Anyway, what have you? Geometry. Why do they call it geometry here? And then in Lightroom or in uh, Lightroom Classic, it's called transform. Come on, guys. Come on. Um, let's do auto. There we go. There, that's good. That, that makes me happy. There you go. Nice little everyday moment. That is what it's about. So now, so basically now I can take my photos, say I go to a conference and I shoot, uh, you know, a styled shoot. I, I, I more often shoot portraits of people. So say I shoot portraits and then I've got moments like this. I can edit my portraits really super carefully and slowly. The, the raw files, I can, set, I can do that on my desktop. And then I can get all of my other stuff to look the same that I've shot with my iPhone in my Instagram feed. And that is pretty cool. That's kind of the point. Um, if you have any more questions, please let me know. Uh, yeah, I've gone over the basics ad nauseum. It's very, very simple. Uh, that's actually the thing I'm most proud of is that it's even simpler. So if you're starting from a JPEG on your mobile phone, profiles are the way to go. If you are editing like a big set of images from a huge event, you definitely want to use the desktop version. They're made for raw. They've got other like little features where you can really dive into little tiny granular details and make those perfect. And if you have both, you can make everything completely cohesive. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It's the first time we've ever done a video where we showed an iPhone on the screen and we're going to be doing many more. Um, and yeah, it's just exciting. I want to see what you guys make with the new mobile profiles. And if you have any questions, we're always around in Facebook on the community. You can ask us anytime. Just go right here. Join us. Well, join us if you haven't already joined us. Whether or not you own anything from Mass and Labs doesn't matter. Uh, we're happy to have you and it's a place of learning and exploration and being safe as an artist and there are no bad questions so we love to have you um, you can also reach us directly at m.me forward slash maston labs oh this is difficult it's all backwards uh, and we will answer your questions personally and help you you know with whatever maybe you don't even know which pack to start with we specialize in that in fact there's even a quiz on the website that you can take that says which preset pack is right for me. And you can take it and it will help you figure it out. So you can like move forward in 2021, make your best work ever. And with mobile profiles, you can make everything cohesive completely, no matter what. That's awesome. Be excited. <laughs>
All right, guys, thank you for joining me. Have a great day. And until next time, happy editing.